Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a flat herringbone bracelet today. It's going to be just like the flat herringbone bracelet I made before. And I'll put a link to that in the description box below and in the corner of this video if you want, want to go back and look at it. Except I'm going to be using 11 O's this time. And I'm going to be doing a little pattern. Uh, I've got my 8 pound fire line and smoke. I've got Miyuki Duracoat Opaque Delphinium. It's a blue color. I've got Miyuki Opaque Dyed Pink 11 O's. I've got 11 O's in Miyuki Buttercream Ceylon. I've got my Galvanized Silver 11 O's that I use a lot. I'm just going to be using these uh, at the ends. I'm going to, I told you before when I did those brick stitch earrings that you can uh, taper down herringbone really good with uh, brick stitch. Taper down the ends to put your clasp on. And this is going to be kind of a wide bracelet, so I'm going to taper down the ends. And I'm going to use a few of these for that. And then I have my 15 O's in the galvanized silver the Yuki Galvanized Silver that I'm going to use to decorate up the sides of the bracelet and hide my thread. And I've got a little toggle clasp and a couple of wire guards and a couple of jump rings. Six millimeter jump rings. And then I've got my scissors to cut my fire line. And I have my chain nose pliers and my bent chain nose pliers to put my clasp on at the end. I got the bent chain nose pliers from BB Craft many years ago. And I use the chain nose pliers to flatten my thread. Uh, to, so I can get it through the eye of the needle. I've got a couple of size 11 tulip beading needles here. I'm only going to be using one, but I always have an extra in case I lose one. And usually when I add thread, sometimes I leave the old thread in there so I can remember where I need to be coming out. So I, I just thread the extra needle with the new thread and, and do that. Um, I think that's everything. Hold on and I'll pour out some of my beads and I'll be back. Okay, I've got a few of my beads poured out here, and I've got my needle threaded, and I'm leaving a good 14 inches of tail because I'm going to come back and do that tapering and add my clasp on it. That's going to take quite a bit, and I want to make sure to have enough, so I'm leaving a good 14 inches of tail. Uh, I've got some beads poured out here, and then I've got some beads poured out over here to the side that I'm going to be pulling from because I don't want to have to be reaching across the screen in front of y'all all the time. I'm going to do this in sort of, I'm trying to go for a patchwork quilt type of look. Uh, I mentioned in one of my older videos, I was talking about all the crafts that I have done over the years. And I mentioned that my mother and my grandmother were both big quilters. They made hundreds of quilts between the two of them over the years. And they taught me how to quilt when I was a really little girl. And this, <clears throat> my mother's been gone for about... 10 years now, but this time of year when Mother's Day is approaching, I get her on my mind more, and I have had her on my mind more lately, and so I just wanted to do a little patchwork quilt type bracelet that would sort of kind of represent maybe a quilt she would have made. <laughs> I made this little design, and I've had to put it on my phone here because I wanted to print it out, but I'm out of color ink. Uh, for my printer so I couldn't print it out in color. I used a, there's a program called Easy Bead Patterns that I got years ago. It's not, it's free or it was when I got it years ago. I, I think there's a paid version but then there's a free version too and or at least it was when I got it years ago and I've had it on my computer for years and it's got little different graph papers that you can use on your computer and put colors in and stuff. It's got a peyote graph and a, a brick stitch graph and this was a loom graph but it'll, it'll work for herringbone and I just fixed a little pattern here of what I wanted to do so I'm going to be going by it as far as doing my colors I'm going to be doing five sections of two uh, you know we in herringbone we always do two beads at a time and in the other uh, video I did I did just three rows of eight o's three six six wide of the 8-0's but I want I'm gonna make this a little bit wider and the beads are smaller so I'm, I'm gonna be going by this little pattern here that I've made 
So I'm going to pick up four of my cream colored. Oh, and I noticed when I poured these out, <laughs> when I showed them to y'all, I had my Edo cream colored ones poured out. And I didn't notice that till I poured them out. Uh, I, I am the most disorganized person, you all. Just, I mean, this room is horrible. My beads are not organized well. I've got to figure out a better way to organize them. Uh, every time I want to reorganize, my husband fusses, and I keep telling him, craft room organization is ever-evolving. <laughs> but I've got to figure out something because everything's all mixed up and not not good. So I'm going to go up the first two of these, 11 O's, and I'm not going to reinforce these as much as I did those 8 O's in the other bracelet because I don't want to put a lot of thread through these 11 O's. Uh, if I do, it'll make it hard to get back through them. And they don't really need as much reinforcing. Smaller beads don't really need as much reinforcing as the bigger beads do anyway. They don't get as loose as the bigger beads do. So I've got four of my cream-colored 11 O's. I would have done this in 8 O's, but I, did, I don't have a whole lot of colors of 8 O's. Uh, I'm going to go down these two. Then back up the first two. This is just ladder stitch, just like I did in the other bracelet. That was probably, I probably shouldn't have reinforced those as much as I did. Now I'm going to pick up two blue. And go down these two and back up these two and then I'm going to pick up two more blue I'm going to go I'm coming out the top of those two blue. I'm going to go in the bottom. Lighter stitch these two on. And then next I'm going to do pink. Pick up two pink. Coming out the bottom of these blue. I'm going to go on the top of these blue. Back up these two pink. Pick up two more pink. Coming out the top of these two pink, I'm going to go in the bottom. down these two new pink that I just put on now I'm going to do blue again pick up two blue coming out the bottom of these two pink going to go on the top of these two blue I mean the top of these two pink back up my blue and I'm going to do two more blue And at the top of these blue, I'm going to go on the bottom of the blue. And go back down these two I just put on. And I'm going to do two more cream. Go into the top of these blue and lighter stitch these on. And go back up the two cream that I just added. I'm going to do two more cream. Go through the... Coming out the top of that cream, I'm going to go in the bottom of them. And then go back down these two cream. And 
and I did not want to put 15 O's here yet, so I'm going to work my way up through here without putting 15 O's around the corner. I'm going to go through this to one cream bead. And I'm going to come out this cream bead here on the end that I want to come out. And that's a way, if you don't want to do the decoration on the side, that's a way that you can do every time if you want to to do that and not put any decoration on the side to hide your thread. Uh, I don't usually do that because it's just easier to put the little decoration on the side, but that's something, that, a different way you can get your thread to coming out where it needs to be without doing that little decoration on the side. Now I'm going to do my blue. I'm just looking at my pattern that I made here. I'm going to do my blue next. And this is going to, I'm going into the herringbone now. Pick up two. Coming out the top of this cream. I'm going to go into the top of this cream. And try and straighten out my thread here because I can see a knot waiting to happen right here. <laughs> for sure going to happen. I'm pretty sure. I think this is probably a knot I'm not going to be able to get out. I obviously pulled out too much thread here. Pulled out extra because I was leaving such a long tail. But apparently I pulled out way too much extra. Hold on, I'll get this out and I'll be back. Okay, I got my knot out. So I've, I'm coming out the bottom of this cream bead here. I'm going to go up through the bottom of this next bead in line, which is this blue. And now next I'm going to do a pink. I'm going to go to, from the top of this blue down the top of the next blue in line. Make my beads set with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to go up the next bead which is this pink. My next color is going to be cream. I'm going to go from the top of this pink to the top of this, th into the top of this pink. Make sure my holes sit with their, the holes facing up. My beads sit with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to go up the next bead in line, which is this blue. And the next block in my little pattern is going to be pink. Coming out the top of this blue, I'm going to go into the top of this blue. Pull my beads down. Make them sit with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to go up the next bead in line, which is this cream bead. <clears throat> and my next color in my pattern is blue, so I'm going to pick up two blue. Go from the top of it, and this is something I do. <clears throat> I didn't do this in the first herringbone uh, video because I didn't want to be confusing. But when I get to the last stitch, I usually flip it before I put my last stitch in because it's easier for me to pull to the right and get good tension on it than it is to pull, you know, opposite me. So that's, I usually do always do that. So I'm going to pull these two down. Make sure they sit with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to pick up two 15 O's to decorate up the side. Coming out this cream bead, I want to be coming out the top of this blue bead. So I'm going to go in the bottom of this blue bead with my needle and my two 15 O's. I 
just decorates the side up a little bit and hides my thread. Now I'm going to complete my little boxes, so I want to do two more blue. Go down the top, coming out of the top of this blue, I'm going to go down the top of this blue. Make sure my beads sit with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to go up the bottom of these, this pink one. Pick up two pink. Go from the top of this pink to the top of this pink. Go up my next beading line, which is this cream. Pick up two cream. Go from the top of this cream to the top of this cream. Go up my next beading line, which is a pink. Pick up two pink. From the top of this pink to the top of this pink. And I got three pink on my needle there. Tell me it's amazing how these beads just jump on your needle when you don't mean for them to. <laughs> Only mean to pick up two and I picked up three. Okay, now I'm going to go down the top, the top of this pink bead. Now I'm going to go up the next beading line, which is this blue. Pick up two blue to complete this little box. Go from the top of this blue. I'm going to flip my work so I can pull to the right. I'm going to go from the top of this blue the top of this blue. Pull my thread through. Make sure my beads sit with their holes facing up. Now I'm going to pick up two 15 O's. Go from the bottom of this second blue bead through the bottom of this top blue bead. Now my next bead in my pattern is a pink, so I'm going to pick up a pink, two pink. I go from the top of this blue to the top of this blue. I go up the next bead in line, which is this pink. And my next bead in my pattern is cream, so I'm pick up two cream. Go into the top of this from the top of the right pink bead to the top of the left pink bead. Make sure my beads sit with their holes sitting, facing up. Now I'm going to go in up the next bead, which is a cream. The next bead in my pattern is blue, so I'm going to pick up two blue. I'm going to go from the top of this cream to the top of this cream and go through. I'm going to go up this next bead in line, which is a pink. Now the next bead, next color in my pattern is cream, so I'm going to pick up two cream. Go from the top of this pink to the top of this pink. Go up the next bead in line, which is a blue. Next bead in my pattern is pink, so I'm going to pick up two pink. Go from the top of this blue to the top of this blue. And I didn't flip it that time. Now I'm going to pick up two 15 O's to decorate up the side and hide my thread. So I'm going from this top blue bead up to through the bottom of this pink bead. Now I'm going to make the rest of my pink box. So I'm going to pick up two pink. 
go from the top of this pink to the top of this pink pull my thread through go up the next beading line which is a cream complete my little cream box so I'm gonna pick up two cream go from the top of this cream to the top of this cream And I'm going to go up the next beading line, which is a blue. Complete my little blue box. Go from the top of this blue to the top of this blue. beads set the way I want them to. Go up this next beading line which is a cream. Pick up two cream to complete my little cream block box. Go from the top of this cream to the top of this cream. Make my beads set the way I want them to. Go up my next beading line which is a pink. I'm going to complete my little pink box. I'm going to pick up two pink. I'll flip my work around so I can pull to the right. And I'm going to go from the top of this pink to the top of this pink. Pull my thread through. Make my beads set the way I want them to. And I'm going to pick up two 15 O's. Go from this bottom pink coming out the bottom of this bottom pink and I'm going to go into the bottom of this top pink. And I'm just going to keep doing that and following my pattern and doing that. And uh, after I get a little bit done, I'll come back and I'm going to go ahead and taper this in because I don't know how much the taper, how much room the taper is going to take. And I need to know that so I'll know how long I want to make my piece. And allow for my clasp and everything. So after I've done a little bit of this, I'll come back and do the taper. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got this much of my little quilt done here. <laughs> so now I'm going to taper. I've come back here to the first part where I had my stop bead, and I take and I'm going to taper this side down. I wanted to do that before I completely finish it because I need to know how much room this is going to take up to know how long to make it. And I said to leave like a 12 to 14 inch tail I think is what I said at the beginning of this that is not enough I have found out by trying to do this already that that is not enough so I just had to sew in what tail I had and add another thread in so I've got about 24 inches of thread here so if you're doing the same thing I am you want to use <laughs> more than uh, more than 14 inches more like 24 inches you want to start with because I'm going to do brick stitch and when we do brick stitch like I've got 10 beads here and the first row of brick stitch is going to take it down to 9 beads and then the next row will be 8 and it'll go like that and that's how I'll do the taper. And brick stitch is really good for uh, tapering down herringbone because the beads in brick stitch they sit with their holes facing up just like they do in herringbone. Uh, I'll link that other brick stitch. I made some brick stitch earrings in a video before. I'll link that too in the description box and in the corner of this video. So if you want to go back and look some more about brick stitch, but I'm going to pick up two. I've got some my 11 0 silvers here because I want to get a little silver here at the end because I've got silver up the sides. So I've got two of my little 11 0 silver uh, seed beads here. I'm not going to go under the first thread bridge. I'm going to go under the second thread bridge. I'm going to pull my thread through. I'm going to go up this second silver seed bead. And then I'm going to go down this first silver seed bead. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go into this second 
cream clear cream seed bead here. And I'm going to go over here to this blue seed bead here. This first row is the row where I did ladder stitch and I reinforced just a little bit and they're a little bit harder to get in into, especially with using these little 11 O's. And now I'm going to go back up this second silver seed bead. And that just straightens those two little beads up a little bit there now. Now I'm going to pick up another one. Go on to the next thread bridge. Go back up my bead. And like I said in that other brick stitch video, when you do this, it is very common that when you're going back up this bead, a lot of times you'll think you're just going back up the bead, but you end up, you're going back under the thread bridge and you don't realize it. And when you do that, your bead will fall off happens all the time probably will happen to me before I get this done <laughs> and I've done quite a lot of this so it's nothing to get upset about I'm gonna pick up another one go under the next thread bridge go back up the bead pick up another one go under the next thread bridge Go back up a bead, up the bead, pick up another one, go on to the next thread bridge, go back up the bead, pick up another one, go on to the next thread bridge, go back up the bead, Pick up another one. Go on to the next thread bridge. Go back up the bead. Pick up the last one. Go on to the last thread bridge. Go back up the bead. I'm going to turn it around, flip it around. This time I'm going to do a row of my blue. I'm going to pick up two blue. I'm not going to go onto the first thread bridge. I'm going to go onto the second thread bridge. I'm going to go back up this second blue bead. Back down the first blue bead. And back through the second silver bead there in that row, row below. I'm going to go up this third silver bead and the blue, second blue bead there. Now I'm going to pick up another blue bead, go on to the next thread bridge, go back up the bead, pick up another blue bead, go on to the thread bridge, Back up the bead, pick up another blue bead, go under the thread bridge, go back up the bead, pick up another blue bead, go under the next thread bridge. Go back up the bead, pick up another blue bead, go under the next thread bridge, go back up the bead, pick up another, the last blue bead, go under the last thread bridge, and go back up the bead. Now I'm going to flip it again. It's beginning to taper there a little bit. Now I'm going to do a row of my cream colored beads. So I'm going to pick up two cream colored beads. I'm going to not go under, not go 
under the first thread bridge but under the second thread bridge I'm gonna go up this second cream bead down the first one and down into that second blue bead in the row below you don't have to do it all at once if you can't you can do it one at a time and I'm going to go up the third blue bead and back up that second cream bead to straighten those up and I'm going to pick up another cream bead go under the next thread bridge and go back up the bead pick up another cream bead go under the next thread bridge go back up the cream bead pick up another cream bead go under the next thread bridge back up the bead pick up another cream bead go under the next thread bridge back up the bead pick up another cream bead go under the last thread bridge back up the bead I'm going to flip it this time I'm going to do a row of my pink I'll pick up two pink I'm not going to go into the first thread bridge, I'm going to go into the second thread bridge. Go back up the second pink bead. Back down the first pink bead. And back into the second cream bead. I'm just going to do this one at a time because it doesn't appear it wants me to do it all at once. I'll back down that first pink bead, back down the second cream bead in the row below. Back up the third pink bead or cream bead and back up the second pink bead. Now I'm going to pick up a pink bead, go under the next thread bridge. back up the bead pick up another pink bead go under the thread bridge back up the bead pick up another pink bead go under the next thread bridge back up the bead up another pink bead go under the last thread bridge back up the bead I'm going to flip it now I'm going to do a row of I'm going to do another row of cream here I'm going to pick up two of my cream beads I'm not going to go under the first thread bridge I'm going to go under the second one up the second cream bead back down the first one let's see if I can get into that second pink one while I'm at it I'm from in the bottom row and then go up the third pink bead and out that second cream bead now I'm going to pick up another cream bead go into the next thread bridge 
back up the bead. Pick up another cream bead, go under the thread bridge. Back up the bead. Well, that bead just don't want to be gone back up through. There we go. another cream bead, go under the last thread bridge, back up the bead, I'm going to flip it, I'm going to do another row of pink, so I'm going to do two pink, not going to the first thread bridge, I'm going to go under the second thread bridge, go up this second pink bead, down the first pink bead and down into the second cream bead in the row below. Back up this third cream bead in the row cream bead in the row below in the second pink bead. Pick up another pink bead, go onto the next thread bridge. Back up the bead, pick up another pink bead, go into the last thread bridge, back up the bead, and I'm going to flip it. Now I'm going to do a row of blue. I'm going to pick up two blue. Don't go under the first thread bridge, go under the second thread bridge. Back up the second blue bead. Back down the first blue bead. And the second pink bead in the row below. Back up the third pink bead in the row below. And back up the second blue bead. Pick up a blue bead. Go under the last thread bridge. Back up the bead. I'm going to flip it. Now I'm going to do my last row with silver. I'm going to pick up two silver. Go under the second thread bridge, go back up this second silver bead, back down the first silver bead, and into the second blue bead in the row below. Back up the third blue bead and back out this silver bead. So now I've got it tapered down so now I'm going to put my uh, wire guardian on here. I've got a couple 80, silver 80's out here. I forgot about them when I did my supplies at the beginning. I wanted them for the clasp area, so I'm going to pick up, I think I'll just pick up one 11-0 and one 8 and my wire guardian. I'm going to go back down the other channel of my wire guardian, back down the 8 Oh my wire guardian so the thread lands in the channel there. Now I'm going to pick up another 11-0, silver 11-0. I'm going to go down this silver 11-0 and this blue 11-0. 
Make sure not to get caught around anything. Okay, now I'm going to, I think I'll go down this pink one. I'm going to make my way around here so I can go around that again. So I'm coming out this pink one here. I'm going to go up the next pink one and up the blue one on the diagonal. And then I'm going to go in this 11-0, and the 11 I put on for my clasping, and the 8 and up through the wire guardian. I'm going to go back down the wire guardian, back into the 8 I'm going to go back down these two 11 O's. 8 0 in the or the blue 11 0 and the pink 11 0. Go over here and go up this pink 11 0 and this blue 11 0. One at a time, apparently, because it doesn't want to go up through both of them. Go up these two 11 O's, these two silver 11 O's, this silver 8 O through the wire guardian, back down the wire guardian, back down the 8 O, hold on to the wire guardian so the thread lands in the channel. And I'm going to go back down these two 11 O's. The blue 8 0, and I'm just going to go down through all the blue or all the 8 0's on this side here because now I've already been through my clasp area three times. So I'm just going to go down through all these. And get down here. And get down here into my project and tie a few half inch knots. Grab this thread bit thread bridge here. Go through my loop. Bring my thread down slowly so that it lands between the beads. Go through a couple more beads. Grab another thread bridge here. Go under my, in through my loop. Pull my thread down slowly. Go through a couple more beads. And another thread bridge right here. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Go over here into the middle of the project a little bit. Get away from the edge, see if I can find a th thread bridge easier. Get this thread bridge here. Go through my loop, pull my thread down slowly. I'm going to go through a couple more beads. Now I'm going to cut off. Just 
So that's one end of my little quilt tapered down. Now I'm going to finish my bracelet and taper down the other end, put the wire guard on, and then I'll come back and we'll put the clasp on. Okay, here we go. I've got my little quilt all done here now. <laughs> so now I'm going to put my clasp on. I'm just going to take my six millimeter jump ring. ring it closed up really good put on my talk bar up really good make sure it'll go together but I'm pretty sure it will yep there we go hmm. so there we go there's my little patchwork quilt herringbone bracelet Hold on, let me get some of my beads cleaned up, and I'll be back. Okay, there we go. There's my little patchwork quilt bracelet. <laughs> this has definitely been a labor of love. It's taken several days to get this done because I used the little 11 o seed beads. It would it'd go much faster if you use 8 o's, but that's okay. Uh, this is definitely something that looks like something my mama would have made, a quilt that my mama would have made. She certainly didn't make jewelry. She didn't even wear jewelry. Uh, as far as I know, the only jewelry she had was her wedding ring, and she had a mother's ring that Daddy got her when uh, when we were young, but that's the only jewelry she ever wore, but she loved making quilts, and this looks like something she would have made. As always, thank you all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook and Instagram and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Thank you.